Good afternoon. This is uh, Mr. Schweitzer, and this is a little quick video on a pre-lab for our metal reactivities lab. Our objective of this lab is to determine which metal is the most reactive metal. So this comes down to a lab where, okay, we have a combination of metals and reacting with uh, ionic solutions. And we've done a, hopefully you've done uh, quite a bit of work on some of this stuff. So we're following sort of a, a unique template. And I would just kind of um, describe this template um, as being, we have for this lab especially, a metal uh, with no charge. So it's going to be solid. And we're going to react this metal with an ionic compound. An ionic compound in solution has a metal cation uh, and a non-metal anion. Um, so it would look like this. We have um, uh, in this case, uh, well let's just finish this up here. So the metal will exchange electrons with metals. So metals exchange electrons with metals. So I'm going to call this metal A and metal B. So when we're done, if the exchange takes place, metal B would be no charge and therefore solid and metal A would then acquire charge, uh, a cation, which then it could join the solution um, having an ion dipole attraction to the solution, the solvent, and the non-metal would simply just stay in the solution. Um, and so now let's, that's the basic idea. Let's walk through the physicalness, how this works. Well, we have ourselves a well plate. The well plate is probably the size of your hand, and it's got a bunch of little divots in here that we can then do chemical reactions with. And I'll just draw out a handful of these. Um, they're little, just little pockets. So to do this reaction, I'm going to take metal A, and I'm going to drop it in here, and you'll see it's just sort of stid sitting in here. Okay, and then I'm going to take the solution. Now this solution right here is ionic, it's aqueous. So metal B plus non-metal anion being aqueous would be located in some type of maybe a dropper bottle um, or um, in a beaker which you could then just pipette out or use a dropper of some sort. So this is now a solution which contains the these two cations and, and anions. Um, so when I drop them, I'll just simply take this out, drop it, and I'll fill it up. Okay. So we'll blow that up a little bit and we would have an opportunity right there for this metal to exchange ions with the other electrons with the other metal. So metal B plus could roam up to the piece of metal, and then as the extension as the exchange takes place, the metal A would enter the solution, and metal B would just sort of become a solid onto the piece of metal and coat it a little bit. So if there is an exchange taking place here, we often see it look it, see it uh, look maybe a little dirty or something's going on, you know, it's not going to look nice and shiny. Um, so anytime we see something happening, that's usually the sign that a reaction is taking place and therefore an exchange is taking place. All right, um, next up we got uh, the actual lab. Let's look at the lab here. So the lab itself uh, doesn't have a, a data table. Um, well, here's the data table here. For some reason, I thought that was missing on my original. But um, I have this guy right here, and I have four metals and four metal solutions. So let's just draw them out. Now, again, you, you, need to re, you need to do all of your reactions before you come to class. So I have, you can do them on a separate sheet of paper. In fact, uh, maybe we will just do them right here. All right, we'll give myself a little room here. So I have my four metals copper metal, um, magnesium metal, zinc metal, 
silver metal. I got copper uh, nitrate. Now keep in mind the the nitrate is just a spectator ion. It's not going to be taking place in the exchange. Metals exchange with metals. So someone might be able to write this as just magnesium two plus and not indicate that the, nit the nitrate is there. It doesn't make a difference. Um, and then we have the zinc two plus and then we have the silver plus. Okay. Um, now in this reaction, the metals exchange with metals, I'm gonna start out by I'll start out by showing the whole reaction and then I might just switch to a net ionic. But this is going to be, um, well, let's do it this one here first. Okay, and I'm going to have to write a little smaller. But I got magnesium metal plus copper 2 plus nitrate. And this will yield, okay, now my ion becomes um, uncharged because of the exchange of electrons. And it becomes copper metal plus magnesium 2 plus nitrate. Alright, so that's my reaction. Now again, I want to, you to realize that this is one reaction and the opposite reaction is actually right here. So I'm going to show these guys right here and then we'll be able to list them all out. Now this guy is just the opposite. Rather than going from solid magnesium plus ionic co copper ions, it's reversed. It's the ionic um, plain old copper plus the M G2 plus and this will yield copper 2 plus and then the magnesium is the metal so I flipped over to a net ionic equation there All right. uh, note that here the products are the reactants here and the reactants are the products here so they are absolute reverses of each other so I'm going to start showing how I would probably suggest you list these out um, we could have, okay, we have, let's do this first one we did. Magnesium metal plus copper plus 2 goes to magnesium 2 plus plus copper metal. And the way I would show that is just like the half reaction, just probably drawing a line like so. Then I would go to my radox potential sheet and find the actual values. And it shows um, the copper one I'll do first. The copper is going to be a positive 0.34 volts. Now we've written a bunch of these right out. You, you could have gone Cu plus 2 plus 2 electrons yields copper metal and it would be 0.34 volts. We've done a bunch of these. We've taken a quiz on it generally speaking at this time. Um, so. Uh, we're using a bit of a shorthand just to see is, are we going to get a positive voltage and this is going to run or are we going to get a negative voltage and it's not. So this is reduction so it's as is on the chart. So the other one is going to be oxidation and it is going to get flipped. Uh, the sign will get flipped. So um, this one's saying Mg metal to ion here is a negative 2.37 so I'm going to flip it to a positive 2.37. So in this case, add those two together. And again, this would be magnesium metal plus uh, going to magnesium 2 plus plus 2 electrons. And this is going to be 11, 7, 2.71 positive. Now, that means that this reaction is going to run. A little smiley face here. Okay. Um, now, in my data table above here is where I'd probably want to put that. So that means that this guy right here is going to run. You can create your own data table right below here, all right, where we're dealing with, let's say, uh, magnesium, copper, and copper plus two. And then we have the magnesium plus two. Just denoted that this particular reaction has a positive 0.271 volts, 2.71 volts. I think that's what we had. Um, right here. Yep. Because this one's got a positive 2.71 volts, this guy would have a negative 2.71 volts. It'd be just the opposite. This would be negative and this would be negative. 
So it's very easy at this point to say, okay, if this one is a positive 2.71, then this is the reverse one, it'd be a negative 2.71. Alright, this would be a smiley face, be a frowny face. Positive means it's gonna run. So let's get back to just drawing out some of our reactions. Okay. So I'm gonna just start listing them. Alright, right and I'd probably do them in pairs. So when I did magnesium and copper, got those two these two done. Um, copper and copper is gonna do nothing. So any of more it's the metal and the same metal, those you can cross out and you don't have to do. The reduction potentials will be the same as the oxidation potentials, just opposite in sign, therefore they cancel to zero. So let's do the um, let's say the silver and zinc. So here's silver, uh, silver, okay, silver and zinc right here. And then here is the uh, silver and zinc right here. Right there we go. Let's draw those two up. All right, so I got my silver metal plus zinc nitrate plus two goes to zinc metal plus AG plus. It's not balanced. Uh, to balance it, you put a two here and a two here. Uh, but again, I'm just worried more about the voltages than anything. Um, zinc two plus going to zinc metal will be reduction, and that will be on the chart as is. And therefore, its value is a negative 0.76 volts. Uh, the silver will be reversed, and the silver is going to be positive 0.8, so I flip it to a negative 0 0.80 volts, giving me a grand total for this reaction of a negative uh, 1.56 volts. So therefore, I could go ahead and list this one here, silver metal and on as being negative 1.56 volts, so this should be a positive 1.56 volts. All right, and I might just list this, do it this way, zinc metal plus AG plus goes to zinc two plus plus AG metal voltage equals a positive 1.56 volts. So I would expect that when I drop solid zinc into aqueous silver nitrate that I get a reaction, something happens. But I would expect that when I drop silver metal into zinc ions that nothing happens, uh, hence the negative. Um, all right, those are now those two are done. I could do finally um, silver and copper. That'd be this guy, and then we have the uh, silver and copper. These two, and then finally we have uh, uh, zinc and magnesium. Is this guy and this guy, and then zinc and copper. Uh, I've got zinc and copper right here, and copper and zinc would be located right there. So fill the rest of them in by simply listing out your reactions on a sheet of paper. We should have a nice data table with positive and negative values, predicting well, predicting whether or not a reaction will take place or not. Um, so we got a bunch of things here. These things get cleaned out just like uh, other labs of this nature. We take our little um, well plate, tip it on its side over a nice big waste speaker, and we have ourselves a squirt gun, a little squirt bottle, and rain it down and wash it in here. And then, of course, we have our soaking containers, which we would soak these little plates in. All right, um, take them out, make sure you wipe them off nice and get a, a paper towel to wipe out the little wells because those do cause contamination if there's stuff in them and that should be pretty close to about it